Hello students. Uh, we have seen the poem the inch came from in the last period. So let me focus the poem once again. In short, what did we see in the poem? The poem by Robert Saudi and in which uh, we have seen the lesson has been given by the poem. The poem is very inspirative. Uh, Inchcape rock or the Inchcape bed which is installed on the rock which was used as a lighthouse for the people, the mariners. So we have also seen this bed was installed by Abbot of Abarbratha and he was blessed by people as he has done very good thing for people, for mariners. And what kind of atmosphere we have seen that is very joyous. People were enjoying or the birds also were enjoying that kind of atmosphere. Then we have also seen Ralph the Rover, another character of this poem who came into uh, that ocean and he saw that there was a thing and it was a bell and which was placed or installed by Abbot of Abarbrutha. He knew well. So the person, the rover was very bad kind of person. He represents badness, his wickedness. It, it was that and he thought that to annoy the uh, abbot of Abarbrutha. He cut the bed and he want to uh, brute or he, he was brute kind of person, sinful person he was. And in this way to plague or to cause the uh, injury or the trouble to uh, Ab Abarbrutha, he cut the bed. So when it was cut the bell, the bell was no more there, it, it went uh, down to the uh, ocean with the gurgling sound. In next uh, page, we have also seen that when his, uh, he, the person, the rover came across, he was sailing through the ocean to, towards Scotland shore and how he uh, saw that there was gale, there was strong uh, storm and in that gale, in that storm, he and his boatmen were uh, confused. They could not find the way, could not find the shore. In that case, the boatmen also thought that now they also couldn't see the bed which was installed by a board and it was cut by a rower. The boatmen also did not know this. And how this rower who has done this bad work, wicked work, he made to the end, how he is boat collide on the, that rock and it went down and with that ship the uh, rover also went down to the head of the bottom of the ocean and he made his game, he made his death. So this is the poem, the theme of the poem. Uh, in short, we have seen that uh, those who do wrong things, they meet due punishment. This is the theme, this is the moral the poem has given us through this poem. So, in short, uh, poem is very inspirative and all these 17 stanzas we have completed. Now, let me focus on the appreciation of the poem. In which we are, discuss, we are going to discuss some points. First of all, the title of the poem. Inchkep Rock is the title of the poem. It represents the virtue and act of goodness. The title of the poem. Generally we see these points when we look at the appreciation. The Inchkep Rock, rock it is a symbol of goodness. The poem is also ins inspirative. Now the next point about the poem. Here, uh, it is written in form of ballad. It is long and narrative poem. It creates the vivid pictures in the mind of readers. The poem is very effective and we know that the poem is having 17 stanzas. This is about the poem. Now about the poet. As we know that the poet of the poem is Robert Saudi. The poem is written by Robert Saudi who is famous for his romantic 
romantic school of poetry. He is also famous for writing narrative poems. He always gives us good message in his each poem. So this is very famous English poet, poet Robert Southey, and all the poems of him are very inspirative. At the same time, the present poem is also a good kind of inspiration. Now next point is theme of the poem. What is the theme of the poem? Mm -hmm. Theme is that the poet teaches something is also called as didactic. Uh, the poem depicts the poetic justice that crime gets its own punishment. Poem is didactic. Didactic means instructive. The poem teaches us something. Upadeshpar uh, Ashihi poem hai. Robert, uh, Rover cuts the bail to annoy the good about and to create problems for the helpless uh, sailors. Uh, this is the theme of the poem. Where, where there are two characters. One is good character, where another is bad character. So these are representatives of goodness and badness, these two characters. So this is the theme. Uh, through this story type poem, poet has taught us something. A good lesson has been taught by the poet. Now the special features style. What are the special features of the poem? They are, poet has used a descriptive and narrative technique. It is very effective poem and language is very simple. It also provides the supernatural elements of darkness and drifting of the ship. The poem provides verbal image of the calm atmosphere and landscape rock as the symbol of goodness. Uh, the techniques used by the poet here that there are very simple and uh, very uh, clear words, images poet has used, a pictorial words or images has been used by the poet in this poem and there are some figures of speech we come across here in this poem. For example, um, alliteration, there, is, there are some examples of inversion, antithesis, personification, etc. And uh, the poem has fixed a pattern that is of Rahim 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 scheme that is A A and B B. Now the moral of the mess or the message of the poem. What is the moral of the poem, the message, as I have told you uh, when teaching the poem? The moral of the message of the poem is read as you sow. Or who do wrong things will meet with due punishment. So that is what? Je log sangla karta tena tatsa phol sangla miladasta. Tuva je log white karadasta, white kritya karadasta. Tena tachi shiksha punishment hi miladasta. Ke rover cha udhala un poet ni aplela dakun dili le. Uh, in this way, the poem has uh, completed here and the poem has, uh, as we have seen, 17 quatrains. Quatrains means stanzas of four lines. Each stanza contains four lines. Then the poem A has moral theme also. It is the good thing about the poem we have seen. There are some images, imaginary words the poet has used up to clear the theme of the poem. and. Whatever the things poet has used here to beautify the poem and in this way we have seen the poem, uh, the inchcape rock. Now we are going to see the poetic devices or the figures of speech used by the poet in this poem in detail. What are the figures of speech used by the poet? Poetic devices or figures of speech. For example, the first line, no stir in the air, no stir in the sea. What do you notice here in this line? There is repetition. The two words are repeated. No stir, no stir. In the same line, there are two words which are repeated twice. It is called a repetition. 
so repetition means the repetition of words in the same line so the same examples will you will find in the poem uh, so little they rose so little they fell so little these are words which are repeated two times in the same line this is called a repetition the next example is the ship was as still as she could be what is uh, the example of figure of speech what do you notice in this line that is personification see the line the ship was as still as she could be the ship was as still as she could be how it is personification because here ship is inanimate thing and which is animated it is used as animation because look at this it is called as still still stillness or being still is a human quality and which is used for the ship which is inanimate thing in the same way the next example of personification is the next line her keel was steady in the ocean see the next thing keel was steady steady so being steadiness or steady is the again human quality or it is human uh, quality which is used for the ship then there is another example so little they rose so little they fell again this is example of personification how it is rose and rose and fell so little so little here the waves poet gives us these words for waves the ocean waves samudrat je jala ata hai tya hanuvar pane unchavta hai ani khali yeta hai so having such kinds of things used by the poet here to explain or to compare these uh, waves in this way again here we have example of personification the next example of figure of speech is inversion see the line for example on a boy in the store on a boy in the store he floated and swung floated and swung see what is mean by inversion inversion means simply the disorder of words in a sentence so there is no correct word order of sentence in the uh, correct order of words in the sentence what do you see here in this line here this the on a boy in the storm it floated and swam the correct order is svo that is subject verb object so here comes subject it floated and swam on a boy in the storm this could be the correct word order and that is why it is called inversion inversion madhe shabdancha kram adun badun dilela asto त्याला इन्वर्जन असे म्हणतात आणि त्याची करेक्ट वर्ड ऑर्डर अशी असते आहे इट फ्लोटेड दॅट इज सब्जेक्ट वर्ब ऑब्जेक्ट ऑर द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द सेंटेन्स सो द करेक्ट वर्ड ऑर्डर इज इट फ्लोटेड एंड स्वंग ऑन अ बॉय इन द स्टॉक इन द सेम वे वी आर हैव सम अदर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ इन्वर्जन सी ऑन पेज नंबर 105 द सन इन हेवन वॉज शाइनिंग गे और see the next example here and to the inchcape rock they go how is the correct word order they go to the inchcape rock one another example of another uh, uh, figure of speech we are going to see now alliteration without either sign or sound of their shock without either sign or sound of their 
a period and it is a transferred from a person to peer peer is not dying but person is dying and who is dying here that is rower is dying and that is with peer he has frightened and here peer word is uh, qualified with this adjective dying so the place of the adjective is transferred this called a transferred epithet the same uh, example of this uh, we will see here in this poem uh, for example so in this way you can find out some other examples of transferred epithet through this poem there are some examples here in this way you must have an idea about how to find out the uh, examples of these uh, figures of speech so we have seen some important uh, figures of speech through this line through this poem these are personification inversion uh, or repetition antithesis and alliteration and transferred epithet so i have told you about the figures of speech the appreciation of the poem now you have to write down all these things into your notebook and go through the poem once again and write in detail the words and the expressions given by the poet in your notebook okay thank you